Hello. Oh, I said it too early for that one and too late for that one. Hello. Noxious too. Oh, sorry. Let's start again. We do either. Okay, I'll bring down the energy. Hey. All right. Whatever. We're going to talk about dealing with back pain. I hope you guys are in line because the polls close at 7 and watching this video. Oh, I see. <laughs> For voting. Yeah. I was just jumping into the back pain thing. We got a bunch of questions that we're going to be answering. A answering. Because we, we, answer, we answer questions. Um, <laughs> but yeah, hopefully you're done voting and already did that. And Or you're in line and you're listening to this live. On or you're here. like, oh, I got to go. And you jet out and listen to us later. Because that's more important. The voting is. I thought you were saying, oh, the video's on, so I'm not going to vote anymore because that's not as important. Kind of out of it. Let's get to it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Question number one. And we are going to talk about back pain. Um, I'm going to do that later on in the video. So if that's why you joined, hang in there. Uh, let's start with question number one. Should I eat before I work out? Hmm. Uh, I was my answer is going to be super sarcastic. I just toned that down. <laughs> <laughs> I actually want to hear what it was going to be. Uh, yeah, if you're hungry, eat. So uh, this is definitely one of those things that you have to, one, kind of know yourself and know how you feel when you work out and what you eat and how it affects your workout. Um, I think most people in general probably feel great eating one to two hours before working out, and that helps them get through the workout some people you definitely you, your workout will definitely go better yeah. if you have eaten before i try to eat two meals just because if i don't then i i don't feel as good in my workout yeah. so well, personally I that's, that's how i feel too. and i know somebody who's another coach and he swears by fasted workouts because he he likes that with his his rhythm and the rest of the day so it's just yep. really personal preference um but if you're struggling to get through your workout and it's feeling really hard, then maybe looking at what you're eating or eating something before a workout is a good idea. There is no, there's no extra benefit, some scientific well, secret, is there? there? No, there is a benefit to eating before a workout. Oh, like okay, not working out. There's not going to give you a boost by doing a fasted workout. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So, but there is benefit to your workout if you eat more, yeah. like, or if you eat before. So but but it, I do think, I agree, it comes down to personal preference. Because yeah. if you like to work out without it, then yeah, then do that. It's fine. Yeah. It's not going to make that big of a difference. Yeah. So if you're hungry, eat something. You know what I do? Also, I'll just add this real quick. You can just say it? Yeah. Um, is because I've not been eating as much lately because I'm losing weight. And I, uh, am, I hate working out when I am losing weight because I just don't have the energy that's normally there because I'm not eating nearly as much. And so what I'll do is I will take a little bowl full of berries, raspberries, blackberries, strawberries, whatever, and I will just munch on those while I work out, which gives me a little bit of a boost of energy, which does help. Like there have been studies showing that even if you just rinse your mouth with some carb, like a, a literal carb rinse that sends signals to your brains to help it feel better and you do a little bit better in your workouts. I feel like that's a little, like that's pretty advanced too. Like it, it takes, it's not advanced to eat berries. <laughs> no, no. I mean, like, the bigger picture, like, eating regular meals and, and eating um, a balanced nutrition kind of is going to serve you better than just having a carb. For sure. During your workout. But it Big is, picture. But, yeah. But it's, it's a trick that, for me, really, like, takes my workouts that I hate doing. Literally hate so much. <laughs> cannot stress that. And makes them slightly better. So, if you find that it gives you the same effect, it's worth trying. Yeah. Um, okay, next question. This And this kind of is a good transition. Do you recommend a protein shake after a workout? Um, so we talked about before, what about after? Should you load up with protein? In general, no, unless you just love having that protein shake after work and or working out and you're hungry and that quenches your thirst and it's some another way for you to get your protein in, then not really. I mean, there is no... Like for the average person, worrying about when you time your protein intake with workouts is not that big of a deal. It's more important just to have regular protein throughout the day. For the most part, for the most part, uh, the studies all are, have been showing lately too that really doesn't matter for anybody. Like as long as you're getting enough protein throughout the day, then yeah, even if you were like had huge massive goals, which that's not 
that's not us that's not our audience so but but the point is like even from just a strictly scientific standpoint as long as you're eating enough protein throughout the day you don't have to get it in right after your workout it doesn't matter yeah. so good and, summary and if you don't like protein shakes don't drink them oh yeah protein shakes specifically are just like you don't ever have to have one if you yeah. don't want i don't like them i do i do like them i don't use them very much anymore yeah. but okay um should your step oh this is a question we got in our challenge uh, that we did the, the, um, the, what was it called? <laughs> it's plan been, less, eat better. Yeah. Kitchen makeover five a, day challenge. It was only a month ago, but, um, I thought this was a good question that could be for anybody. So I wanted to do it here. Someone asked, should your step count change with age? And by the way, if you have any questions watching this later, feel free to type them in and we will answer them, uh, and either tag you in it or we'll answer them at a future Q and A. Yeah. Make sure you get your response. So the question was, should your step count change with age? The, I think the context of this question was we were just talking about how what your step count in general, we kind of say to aim for a good range is at least seven, 8,000 steps a day. Um, and there's reasons for that, but, but the point was, okay, what about if you're older? Like, should, does that change the recommendations? And the, the short answer to this is that no, it really doesn't. There, for pretty much everyone, there are always reasons why having a higher step count is going to be beneficial. And, and that is um, whether you start at 2,000 steps a day and increase it to 4,000, or you start at 5,000 and increase it to 15,000, like there are benefits to any small amount and any big amount up to a certain extent. I would say beyond like 15,000 steps or so, there's probably not a ton of benefit to do more than that. There may be a little bit, but it starts to, the results, benefits start to taper off a little bit. Mm -hmm. But specifically with age, um, this is one of those things where, and this is true of a lot of fitness stuff and nutrition stuff, is that there aren't a ton of scientific reasons to change what you're doing because you're older and the step count is similar in that way there are a lot of strategic reasons to change what you're doing when you're older so like when you're when you're 45 you maybe have a little bit longer recovery time between workouts or there are certain things like that where you got to go okay let's do this a little bit differently just because i need my body to recover i've got more responsibilities with my family things like that but just from a science-based perspective, like it's not so different where you would have to go, okay, all of a sudden I am 40 and now I have to do everything totally differently. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really work that way. And step counts the same way. Is that just in general, if you can raise it a little bit, great. If you can get to that seven or 8,000 step count uh, every day, then that's even better. Awesome. Okay. Uh, next question. How many fruits should I eat? Okay. Someone asked this a long time ago. They asked how many fruits and veggies, and we only answered the veggies part. So, mm -hmm. so let's, now I'm talking we're getting to the back half. Okay, so it really depends on your goal. You know, if you're eating weight loss, eating for weight loss, or if you're in maintenance, kind of varies with how much food you need to be eating. So, in general, um, if you're just trying to maintain your weight and not trying to lose, probably eat um, several fruits and vegetables throughout the day. I'd say four to eight servings of fruits and veggies. Um, if you're you know, maybe a little bit more veggies than fruit, good to mix it up. And if you're on the weight loss goal, then maybe a little bit less fruit than vegetables um, and kind of balance that out to the day, through the day. But um, also sometimes people have a really hard time getting a vegetable in at breakfast. So that's a great time to have a fruit because it's awesome and nutritious. Lots of nutrients. Yeah, so just like vegetables, but sometimes fruit can be a little bit more calorie dense, so that's why there has to be a little bit of a nuance there with weight loss. I would say though that also with weight loss, fruit is a really great carb choice. Mm -hmm. So that's, it's not to say that, oh, you're losing weight so you shouldn't have fruits. It's more like if you eat a ton of fruit, then yeah, you might have to cut back because you just have to eat a little bit less in general to lose weight. But fruits are still a great choice to yeah. have in weight loss. So you just have to know how much you're yeah. having. That's something that we help people figure out, like what the good balance is of fruit and carbs and veggies and that works for them and their lifestyle and their preferences. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So next question. Going. 
Uh, does rowing count as, an, as a strength exercise? That was the specific question, um, which I know we already answered this for her, but I wanted to go into more detail here okay. on the Q&A. So the, the quick, and also I was assuming that the question meant rowing as in like on a rowing machine, so like with a fan or sometimes they use water, but it's the kind where you sit there and you row and row and row and row and row and row. And we're not talking about like a dumbbell rowing uh, exercise or something like that. So starting there, is that a strength exercise, getting on a rowing machine like that? And the, um, the, the very simple answer is that no, it's not. That's really a type of cardio. It's great for you. It's a really good type of cardio. It's low impact, so there's not a lot of stress on the joints. There are some people who have trouble with it with their back, so you know that's something we'll be talking about here in a second. But uh, um, in general, it is not a strength exercise, and I wanted to give a bigger explanation as to why, because the truth is, if you don't have a lot of strength, if that's not something you've really worked on, then doing just about anything will increase your yeah. strength to a certain degree. So there's... There's, I can't remember the exact quote, but there's a, there's a well-known strength coach who talks about how like, if you've never done anything before, you can just hop on a bike and all of a sudden your biceps are gonna get bigger. Cause even though biking has nothing to do with your biceps, <laughs> just doing something is going to increase your strength yeah. and increase your muscle. Um, but on, also on top of that, so their strength is not, it, strength has like kind of a range of things. There's different ways to express strength through your body. There are, okay, I'm picking up a piano and helping a friend move a piano into the house. That's using like your absolute maximal strength. And then there's, okay, I am, uh, I'm trying to think of an example of an exercise. Bringing but the dog food in. Bringing the dog food in. So I'm carrying it and it's heavy and, but I, and it's not exerting all of my strength all at once. So there's, there's, you know, kind of a range of ways to express strength. And the more, the closer it gets to the bottom end of that, the less actual strength oriented it is. So for another extreme example, walking, if you've never walked before, you're <laughs> using your leg muscles that very well may increase your strength in your legs. Mm -hmm. But you can walk for days at a time, theoretically, and you're, you would not get all of a sudden just have these huge bodybuilder legs because that's not enough to stimulate the muscles. Um, oh, we got a, there we go. That's, oh, we have I guess a our poor connection, connection on, one, on one of the cameras here. So that's not enough uh, of a stimulus on the muscles to make your leg muscles grow, to walk. So things that you can do for very long periods of time are, while they may increase strength somewhat, the, they're not going to do it as much, and so they're not considered strength. So if you really have the goal of wanting to increase strength, which I believe and have good scientific foundation reasons to believe that everybody should work on improving their strength, it is one of the best things that you can do for your health. It is one of the best ways to lose weight in a healthy way and to make it more sustainable so you keep the weight off. So if you're doing that, then you should be doing more things that are not the, okay, I could do this for long periods of time. So for example, on a rowing machine, you can do that for a long time. So it's not a lot of stimulus on the muscles, even though it will help some, you're better off doing exercises where it's like, okay, I can literally only do this, like with a dumbbell row, I, this weight is only, is heavy enough where I can only do it 10 times and I get past that and I, I can't lift it anymore. That's getting the, the um, working the muscles a little bit harder. So not so much like, piano sized workout but maybe washing machine <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm not gonna put those parameters on it because i mean to be true to tell you the truth most people should be working toward the maximal end of their strength too so sometimes doing certain exercises where you literally can only lift it like three times is one of the best ways to improve your strength for sure once you start getting beyond, and this is this is where the nuance starts to fade a little bit, but once you start getting beyond 20 reps of something, 30 maybe at the most, then it's like, okay, you're not, now you're just doing cardio. And even though it still might work your strength a little bit, if you can do it more than 20 or 30 times, it's probably not a great way to improve mm -hmm. your strength. That's maybe the best guideline I can give, even though it's, there's more nuance to it than that. Yeah. But, 
that's a quick and easy way to think of it. So like rowing, you can row more than 30 times. Mm, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> and if you can't, then maybe that is a great place to yeah. start. But, but you're going to be able to move beyond that very quickly. So, okay, let's move into the last question. Um, do you ever have low back pain? And how do you strengthen your lower back? So this was a combination question. Okay. So real quick, I have definitely had lower back pain. Me I too. You have too? Yes. yes. <laughs> Most people have. I, I think the statistic is like 70% of people wow. have experienced lower back pain at some point or another. So for me, I threw up my back for the first time when I was just 12 years old. And then I had periods of time beyond that for the next, I don't know, not 20 years, 15 years, something like that, where I would throw out my back regularly. Mm -hmm. And as an adult, it would happen pretty much every year, at least once. And it was like on the floor, Megan has to help me up because I can't move that kind of back yeah. pain. And then it would take weeks for me to get back to normal. And, uh, and you couldn't, like the kids couldn't do certain things without triggering it. Like we oh, had yeah. to be really careful. Yep. So... The first thing I want to, that's just to say that, yes, I have experienced it. And so this is very near and dear to me. Um, the first thing I want to say about this is that I see this fairly frequently on social media. Someone will say, having lower back pain, does anyone have any ideas what I should do? And there, it will get so many comments from people saying, oh, this is what I did and you got to do this. And this is what I did. Like people are very passionate about their answers with back pain, which is understandable because if you've gone through it, especially if you found something that works for you, then you want to help everybody with it. The problem with that is there isn't one solution that works well for everybody. So some people will say stretching. Stretching can actually cause more long-term back pain. Even if it feels good at the time, it can actually cause more problems later, depending upon how you're stretching and what you're stretching. Mm -hmm. Not just stretching in general, but that's why just saying stretching. Not great advice. Strengthening your back is really good for back pain in certain instances. And then there's other times where the types of exercises you're doing, the types of movements you're doing are actually worse for your back too. So there, there isn't, as some people will say like, okay, well, you got to work these muscles, your hips are tight, your whatever, maybe, but there isn't one solution. So don't just go and listen to someone who says, this is what I did. This is what you got to do. It's not going to help. You need an individualized plan. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's going to be super difficult to solve it. It absolutely can be solved in most instances. Um, and in fact, I, I don't, I'm not a doctor, so I should, I should throw that out there first. Like, <laughs> Seek medical advice. None of this is medical advice. Go talk to your doctor and see what they say. But I also know that there are numbers showing that a lot of back pain can be resolved without surgery. But again, I'm not a doctor. So that, that's number one. There isn't one specific solution. I do want to make another quick point just on pain in general. I won't get deep into this, even though it's way more complicated than most people realize. The, the, the short version to this is that just because you're experiencing pain in a certain area does not mean you have an injury of any kind. It doesn't mean that you have an injury in this area where you're having pain. You could be having an injury somewhere else or you could be, you might not even have an injury at all. It could just be pain for whatever reason. We don't know why. And the, the opposite is also true where you could have an injury and not feel pain at all. There are some people who have most adults have like, if you were to go and do an MRI of their shoulders or of their back, they would have some sort of injury that they didn't even know about. Mm -hmm. So just because you're having pain doesn't mean something's necessarily wrong. The reason why I wanted to point that out is because the second part of the question was, how do you strengthen your lower back? Exercising for your lower back is, for, for lower back pain is about uh, strengthening to some extent, but it's also can just be about your body literally relearning movements that are safe and teach reteaching your body like, oh yeah, okay, I can do this and I'm, it doesn't hurt. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to do this because it doesn't hurt and that will help you get to a point where, hey, you may not have any injury anymore. You'd be, you may be completely recovered, but you're experiencing pain. And just the act of going through certain movements will help your body to learn to not put pain into your brain. And, and I'm not saying it's mental, like it's real pain, yeah. but, it, but so it can help with that. Just, just know that that's part of it. It's not simply about strengthening it. It's also about 
that learning to move again better. Um, as far as literally how to strengthen the lower back, you need to do back, lower back exercises. <laughs> um, and there are a lot of different ones. One of the best ones is deadlifts, which is funny because that's another one that you'll hear people say like, oh, don't do deadlifts because if you got a low, bad lower back, that's gonna hurt them. It actually, there. in fact, there was a study recently that came out that showed that lifting really heavy deadlifts can be as effective for treating a... Well, I'll just say it. Treating what? For, for uh, treating lower back pain as doing other lighter exercises. So... Can I interject there? Yeah, but we... Okay, go ahead. Um, deadlifts hurt me when I had lower back pain. So I think you really do need that individualized approach. Totally, like, totally. There is no one size fits all. Even but, though deadlifts are really good for strengthening your yep. lower back just the point is you don't have to be scared of them yeah. like it may be that you don't deadlift ever that's fine you can do different exercises there's there are you can do like a hip thrusts that work the glutes but they also work the lower back some you can do back extensions um which are like uh, it's hard to do this just on this camera here but <laughs> there's the that machine on the gym that leans you forward at an angle like this and then you bend your upper body up and down that works your lower back um, doing seated rows, like, like not the rowing machine like we were talking about earlier, but the weighted rows where you're pulling the, the weight stack. That can be good for the lower back. Um, the other thing I was going to say about deadlifts, though, is because that one is a common one that people do struggle with. Mm -hmm. There are variations of deadlifts that you can do that can build you back up to, totally. to lifting heavy again. And... And because lifting heavy deadlifts has been shown to help, maybe it's not where you start, maybe it is. It, again, it depends on the person, but there's no reason why you can't get there eventually if you start with doing something like rack pulls, which is just a deadlift that starts higher off the ground, so you're not going through as big of a range of motion with your back. There are single leg deadlifts, there are, there are all kinds of variations of the deadlift that you can do that can put their back through the through that range of motion again teaching your back like oh it's okay to do this this isn't going to hurt and and then you can get stronger and stronger and stronger with it so even if something kind of hurts at the beginning it doesn't necessarily mean it's always going to hurt yeah. which is super important in fact that'll be the last thing i say about this is it is super important to understand that you you don't ha you won't always experience pain and one of the biggest things that can cause you to continue having pain is the fear of that pain oh yeah is literally being scared to move in certain ways the more you're thinking about your back even while you're exercising and going oh this might hurt the more likely you are to get hurt yeah. so so relearning how to do these things and get rid of that fear can also help alleviate the pain that's one of the things i learned through pt physical therapy yeah it's just like retrusting certain injuries and that my body could do it and it was okay and yep in, in a specific customized way i was gonna say yeah. again i'm not a doctor so don't do any of the stuff that i'm saying without either talking to a doctor or yeah. getting someone to like a physical therapist Check or or come to us and go okay i've gone to the doctor they say everything's fine but it still hurts what should i do and then getting a personalized plan yeah. we can help you with that Get someone who can help you specifically. Don't just take any of this advice at face, advice at face value and apply it because that's not a good idea. But hopefully that helps you at least know, yeah, back pain is something that you can work around and improve and move beyond. I've gotten to where I don't throw my back out ever anymore. And I still deal with it from time to time, but it's become a non-issue for me. We've had several clients like not have back pain anymore either. Yep. Which is pretty significant. For sure. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Anything that's, else? No, that's it. We've gone okay. long enough for tonight. But if you have any other questions, ask them and we will answer them in a future Q&A or we'll, uh, you can send us a message too. We'll talk to you in person. Okay. Awesome. Cool. Bye. Bye.